in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Matthew chapter 25 The more I seek to understand God The more I align to understand His ways I'm amazed at the things that I discover about God Alongside the reasons why we seldom see Magnificent dimensions of His power and His grace and I am humbled and forced to admit that God is a good God and there is something really wrong with our understanding of Him Hallelujah and this is one of the keys that I want to share with us there's a separate series coming that will deal with this but then the Lord just has one question for us tonight written in our requests written upon the tablets of our hearts are several needs and miracles that we trust the Lord to bring some of us healing miracles some of us are here to encounter higher levels of grace some of us are trusting God for influence prosperity access to revelation breakthroughs all kinds of things and there's a very simple question can God trust you this is my admonishment tonight can God trust you it looks like a very simple statement very basic but this is the reason why many people may never be granted access to the deep things of God can God trust you Matthew 25 let's read from verse 14 for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods and unto one he gave five talents to another two to another one to every man according to his ability and straightway he took his journey and he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made other five talents and likewise he that had received two he also gained other two but he that received one went and dug in the earth and hid the Lord's money after a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents saying Lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold I have gained besides them five talents more and his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee a ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Same thing happened with the second person. And then let's go to 24. Then he that had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not spread and i was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth lo there thou hast what is thine his lord answered and said unto him thou wicked and slothful or other versions say unfaithful servant thou knowest that i reap where i sweat not and gather where i have not sown or spread Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with interest. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him that had ten talents. The last verse. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he that have abundance 
and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. There is so much, I believe with all my heart, that in this season the Lord wants to reveal and commit to his body. Please listen. The Lord wants to commit new and greater dimensions of the anointing. The Lord wants to commit higher and superior levels of influence. The Lord wants to commit access. The Lord wants to commit prosperity like never before. But there is one question. Can God trust me? Can God trust you? It's always been a question of trust. Not his ability. Trust. Can God trust you with the anointing that you seek? Can God trust you with the level of increase and access? Can God trust you with classified spiritual information? Can you be a faithful steward of the mysteries of the kingdom? Are we together? Can God trust you with the children you are trusting that He gives you? Can God trust you with the ministry that you desire that He gives you? Can God trust you with the increase? You know, many times we don't think about these things. All we want is God give me. Lord, you have to answer me. Wipe my tears. Change my story. You see a lot of people saying, Lord, give me money. Give me prosperity. And I can imagine the Lord looking from heaven. Can I trust you? Are we together? God never trusts people He has not tested. God does not trust you by faith. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Notice that in this parable, the Bible says, when you read from verse 14, it says that there was a man. That man was obviously a wealthy man. And the man had assets, had possessions, etc. And then the Bible says that he had three servants, three workers. Notice. Now, the Bible does not give us the details of how he recruited them. But it was very clear from the context of this scripture that he had been watching them. Is that true? And the Bible says that on the strength of his his observation he gave unto one five talents he gave unto one two talents he gave unto one one talent notice how correct he was by the results that were produced he had been watching them there was a day he gave them certain things and he observed their stewardship and he now gave one five talents two talents and did not supervise them he left and then the Bible says, after a long time, he came back to find out which of them still had a sense of stewardship. And the Bible says, two out of the three, one had multiplied and kept good stewardship of what he was given. Same thing with the other. And there was an angry, greedy, jealous, and unserious one who really deserved one. In fact, deserved none. True? He was waiting in anger for the master to come. Observe many things wrong with this guy. He was irresponsible. He was not willing to learn because the other two were his colleagues. He would have easily met them and said, what did you do with the five and two? He had access to people who had results. Are we together? So you wouldn't say that the mentor was not there, but they were people. All of them were trained by the same person, meaning he was not a listener. There was something about his arrogance that was becoming glaring. I'm sure he was offended for being committed one. You see that? And then when the master came, he said, Mr. Five Talents, what have you done? He said, this is what I've done. I have multiplied your estate. I have multiplied your assets. The other person with the two, the same thing. And then he said, how about you? He said, I've been waiting for you. Now you will hear from me. I know you are a hard man. I know it from the lecture. I know it from the way you don't like me. I know it from the way you shut me down when I try to interrupt you as you talk. And so I thought that it would be a waste of time to pay attention to you. Anyway, just to let you know I didn't lose anything. Here's what you gave me. You sow seeds, not talents. You see that? And he dug it in the earth. And gave the man. And the man said, you are a wicked and unprofitable servant. 
He said, at least if you could not produce the results yourself, why don't you give those who can produce it? Are you seeing? You did not, your problem was not your inability to produce results. It was your pride. You would have handed it to someone who could produce the results. And I would have credited it that you were a humble person, though ignorant. You were both ignorant and arrogant. Are we together? Trust. There are so many people. Listen. You know, we live in a society where we admire results. And results are wonderful. But if you've been in this house for a long time, you know that God has taught us to observe how results come. Not just to celebrate the appearance of results. There are men of God who want the anointing. There are so many people who want... I think one of the major problems of people now is this money thing. Prosperity, finances, money. Oh God, arise. Oh God, give money. Oh God, wipe our tears. And God says, look, if there is nothing wrong with my abundance. You have a problem with your country, not me. You see that? And then God is asking a question to everyone listening. Can I trust you? Can I trust you to be a faithful steward with my people? There are men of God who want crowds. We celebrate crowds. We want God to... Can I trust you to burden yourself and meet them at the point of their needs? I want expansion in ministry. Can I trust you to sustain capacity enough to deliver at all times? Lord, connect me to great people. Can I trust you with access to their information? Listen, this is a very powerful message. Very powerful. Can God trust you with money? Can God trust you with men? Can God trust you with influence? Can God trust you with the anointing? These are the priceless commodities that make for great men. Can God trust you? God has tested people with the anointing and they made a mess, a mess of it. God trusted people with money, they made a mess of it. God trusted people with information, they made a mess of it. There are many destinies today. Some of our loved ones, sadly, who would never be where they were if they knew how to be trusted with information. God brought them to men and women of influence and they abused the privilege of access and did not know how to keep information. Other people anointings. God brought them the anointing and they did not find out how the anointing remained. They were more passionate about... Let me tell you something. Success, just like the anointing and any other thing, the easiest part of it is the arrival. The maintenance of anything given by God is harder than the reception. Are we together? The hardest part of, the easiest part of prosperity is the arrival of resources. Maintaining it takes a lot of discipline. Maintaining the anointing, the glory of God upon your life. Maintaining influence. Maintaining relationships. All of these priceless things. The simple question God is asking us tonight is, can I trust you? Can I trust you with the answers to your request? Can I trust you? Lord, I want admission. Can I trust your heart when you get admission? Lord, I want a job. The brother came and shared about his job and when he mentioned the amount, people were clapping. Can God trust you? I must be a millionaire. That's not the issue. Can God trust you? God gave you 30,000. You struggled for one month to pay your tithe. And God says, you see this? I love you too much to increase you. So that it does not destroy you. Are we together? I shared it, I think it was last week. That it, it, was, it was a statement I heard from a man of God. And the Lord reminded me again in my place of retreat. That there are certain people who cannot be trusted with deep spiritual things. Because they have not built capacity to manage the, the contentions in the spirit that come along with that level. 
There are levels of prosperity that when God gives you the kinds of attack that comes, your prayer life, your word life, and your spiritual stability cannot accommodate that level of lifting. So God's withdrawal of it is an act of His love for you. Are we together? The Bible says, an heir, as long as he's a child, he said, differeth not from a slave. There is no difference, but he's under tutors and governors who mentor him until the time appointed for him to come into the fullness of sonship. So the question is, I watch people, and truly speaking, sometimes I, I, can, feel, I can feel the burden of God's frustration, if I use that word. While I minister to people. Because I know that their desires will not be answered. It's a very difficult thing as a man of God to pray for someone. You already know the prayer will not be answered. And yet you cannot tell the person because of this key. That the individuals have not sustained the ability to be trusted with that level of grace. There are men of God who desire superior levels of the anointing. Almost every week, you see me leave this place, maybe past 12. I've had a week long of activities, just returning um, to Zari and right here. Have another conference, you know, and all of that. Can you be that much of a servant when God gives you the anointing? Or will you now begin to merchandise the anointing? And say you know that I'm busy and all of that. Those who have money, join this queue. Those who are still trusting God, join the other one. Can God trust you? Is God speaking to anyone? Man of God, I want to be able to see in the spirit and hear in the spirit. And then do what with the information? That's my question. What happens when God grants you access to the deep secrets of people? Do you have the psychological stability to sit under such classified information and be quiet? I want to become a great man of God. What do you do as you counsel people? As they open up their life, deep secrets that sometimes even as couples they do not know, even as family members, information that only the individual and God and you being the next. Do you have the fortitude to be silent in the midst of plenty? Are we together? Let's be honest with ourselves and not turn God into a fool. This trust is one of the greatest keys to seeing the outstretched arm of God. There are people who cannot be trusted with certain levels of revelation. Can you be trusted with such depth of the prophetic and be in a meeting and you are seeing everything and then they give you a mic and then you can just come up and pray for one minute and regardless of what you are seeing, you drop the mic back and sit down. There is always that itch. I, I want to sit down but look, uh, I'm, Kai, I'm seeing something. Now, we will now... Add that carelessness to the revelation and make it look like it's the Holy Spirit that is controlling all. The only thing he's sponsoring is the revelation. It is your flesh that is adding the lack of stability. But because you are flowing in the Spirit, supposedly everybody thinks it's the Holy Spirit that is responsible for all of the outcome. Can you be trusted? We need the anointing, but can you be trusted? Lord, I want my own house. I'm tired of rent. Can you be trusted with maintaining it as God's house? Lord, I want to be a kingdom financier. And then God says, you have 110,000 empty it. And you say, I cast that voice. It can't be God. Abba. Something that I've said for how many months? And God says, and you, you are mentioning 100 million with no respect. You want to die? It's amazing how we do not think about the cost dimensions of the things we desire from God. We want it. Do you know why we want it? Because we hope that by acquiring things, it will change people's perceptions about us. So you are wearing a nice suit, we are wearing a nice this, so it will make someone look at you and respect you. No. Things were never supposed to be the basis of our confidence. Let him that glory and glory in this, 
that he understandeth and knoweth me. Not the value in his bank account, not the hair, not the shoe, not the clothes. My simple question before we begin to pray is can God trust you? If you cannot answer this question tonight, then you deserve to go on a retreat. Hallelujah. There are so many families in need of children. The man is praying that God will give him a child. And you watch the way he's managing his wife. You watch the way he's managing the car. That's how you are going to manage a baby sent from heaven. And God says, no way. Can I trust you? You saw somebody's child and slapped the child as if just because the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. It should not surprise you when a child is foolish. And you beat someone's child as if you are beating your age mate. And say, God, I'm waiting for my own. God says, no way. This is not how things come from heaven. You must be proven. Are we together? You are staying in another man's rented apartment. The water is leaking. You don't care. Because you say, it's not my apartment. Is that true? Everything is spoiling and you don't care. I won't waste my money. And then the Lord is watching you. And you are there prophesying and making a fool of yourself. And saying, one day I will have my own. And I will have tenants. Do you not know you are programming a harvest? And God says, for the sake of my mercy, I will keep you at this level. Until you qualify by being trustworthy. I have watched specific people enter certain dimensions they were not praying for simply because of trust. I repeat myself, brothers and sisters, can God trust you with the anointing? He got you filled with the Holy Spirit. You are wasting the ministry of the Holy Spirit already and you want more power. You are not utilizing the person of the Holy Spirit. So what do you need the anointing for? Can you keep and maintain the anointing? Let me tell you, this anointing, you've heard me say, the anointing is like a knife. There is a way you hold it. It can kill you, the holder of it. Are we together? Have you seen people use a knife and injure themselves by mistake? It wasn't the knife's fault. It was something about the way you held it. We desire the anointing. And God wants to commit it. But the question is, can we be trusted? Can you be sleeping and God wakes you and says, intercede for A, B, C for the next three hours. And your own prayer request is not there. Can you carry out the anointing and have several challenges yourself? And God does not even allow you to pray for them. You are there praying for others. Do you have the fortitude to survive that? Hallelujah. We need the anointing in our lives. But can God trust us? How about influence? There are some of us who have lost precious people in our lives. Not physical death. We've lost certain levels of influence. Because we could not manage it. The Bible says, listen carefully. It says that Joseph... When Joseph was granted access to become the prime minister, right? Paraphrasing that he was wise in his dealings. He understood that he was not an Egyptian. And he made sure he kept attracting the favor of Pharaoh. To the point that Pharaoh gave gifts and said, go and give your father. Ask them to come. Hallelujah. There are many people who pray for favor. The man of God prophesies favor to your life. And then, um, let me have someone come. This brother is praying for favor. Are we together now? Please come, Pastor Femi. And he's praying, Lord, give me access to Pastor Femi. Please stand here. And this is this guy's prayer. And he's just praying. Then a man of God, standing, representing the presence and the power of God, prophesies, may you find favor. And the Holy Spirit plays his own role by bringing you to a place of influence. See that? And now, this man is discussing with his fellows. And just because you have access to favor to listen to their conversations, you do not have the ability to keep yourself psychologically sound. 
you go around and say these men are discussing one billion five billion and somebody says which one let me go and beg him let me tell you what the foolish beggar would do he says sir don't be offended you see that man he was discussing something that was attractive me my own is just rent of 120 and he said who told you and he points that he will give him the 120 and drive you that beggar has replaced your position because of foolishness the holy spirit answered your prayer lack of wisdom took you back to egypt are we together now there are people who sit among great people come as an act of favor and they hear people talking discussing politics god is blessing you instead of you to behave yourself wisely i'm showing you how not trustworthy many people are you listen to their conversations and later on you now run your mouth and say sorry sir i don't know who you are but sorry this thing you are saying the news i don't know which newspaper you follow but the one ah, ah, no now was it not efcc that did this thing and you are talking even hitting the person at the chest and then later they will tell you that person is the manager of what your father is looking for a job he's looking for a contract there and the person say who brought this small boy into this place they say drive him and let him never come again prayer answered foolishness reverses us back i really really want god to bless us are we together i wouldn't lie to you if you are not trustworthy there are certain things that will be far from you anointing prosperity relationships influence i have seen men of god who go to the churches of other people and just because they have the anointing they do not have that ability to maintain trust you just move around and start speaking to everyone and say stand up you don't know which man of god is which stand up say, stand up what am i seeing you are this uh, are you this and that and then you find out that this is an overseer somewhere probably they were considering inviting you and your foolishness locks a door that would have granted you access to meet your destiny helpers you must know how to behave yourself wisely signs and wonders is not just a charm that happens to people anyhow there is a protocol there is a system hallelujah praise the lord can you be trusted with relationships can you be trusted with valuable relationships advantageous connections can god bring people of influence in your life and then you don't become a parasite and a nuisance to them are we together now Yes. I've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy and blessed people. God is my witness. I never, if we are in a restaurant with them, I pay for it. Both myself and them. I will fight to make sure that I don't allow that. Let me tell you what many of us will finish and say, Sir Abba you that uh, you have this in me that so your voice has struggling and the man looks at you and says this guy is not an advantage to me go you see demons don't just walk anyhow they observe your weakness and build a fortification around it if your weakness is lack of wisdom that becomes their access point you can be delivered you can fall and rise our hearts are full of faith but many believers our heads are empty there's no strategy there is no wisdom so we are full of faith but we never rise strategically or we cannot maintain our lifting can god trust you with relationships are we together can god trust you with influence influence the ability to compel loyalty from people is a dangerous thing to be influential. You know, there's a statement on easy lies the head that wears the crown. Listen very carefully. It's a miracle service. The miracle has already happened. Are we together? This that I'm giving you, maybe second to salvation, is one of the greatest miracles that is happening in this place this night then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture the system of god 
is something that we must study. Otherwise, we'll keep mocking and flattering ourselves with one testimony today, never to have another one tomorrow. And you see, when your life is void of predictable results, you will be angry, you will be resentful, you will begin to hate people. You will look exactly like the man with one talent. Can God trust you with influence? You have access to people. You can say, Pastor Femi, go and remove this tie and bring it. And he says, yes, sir. Take. Gentlemen, remove this, your watch, and give me. God said it, and he believes in the word of God upon you. Can you have the discipline to be shown his bank account and see one million and keep quiet? Not to say, sir, now that I've, I've encouraged you, please encourage me too and the man said I don't have anything he said it's not true you have 578,089 kobo and Ben said it's true now that was not the Holy Ghost the gift was from God the use was from a mindset that has not been well constructed by God are we together he gave unto them five two one according to their abilities then he collected from one that had one I thought he would keep it to himself the goal was never to keep it to himself he gave the guy that now had ten to have eleven sometimes depletion in your life is not a message from Satan depletion in your life is a message from God to you that your stewardship is under attack are we together? When resources begin to deplete mysteriously, when relationships begin to deplete mysteriously, when influence begins to deplete mysteriously, it's not just a call to go and pray and bind. It's the time to pray inquiry prayers. Lord, what is going on? Why is it that I could call this woman yesterday and she would pick but now i am calling her and she's saying sorry i'm in a meeting why am i i mean the top five people who were channels of favor in my life are now too busy for me it's a message it's not just something no there must be a spirit oh, oh god i write a prayer point number one prayer point number two no let's be intelligent in our approach it is a message from god to you that you are something is wrong with your stewardship all of a sudden you go for a meeting and the power, the grace and the glory of God does not flow. You find out that there is a struggle with revelation. It happens in one meeting. You give an excuse that the people didn't fast. It happens in another meeting. You give an excuse that the sound was not very nice. After five meetings, go for a retreat quickly. Depletion is proof that your stewardship is being questioned from the realm of the spirit. Because the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter. Are we together? I'm teaching you the systems of the kingdom. When you see things that used to work in your life, and all of a sudden, in a succession, not just one area of your life, in a succession, doors begin to close. Could it be that you are becoming the man with one talent? This is a miracle that some of us need right now. I know some of us came believing that, look, it, it can be. I was a millionaire 2004 and then now I'm going down and right now I don't even have up to 100,000 in my account. There must be a spirit. I know that apostle is going to speak one word. When I fall under the anointing and rise, that will be over. Listen, I don't want you to be frustrated. It could be that that withdrawal is God's mercy to you. He pegged you at a level. He rated you and saw the highest level where your stewardship was at his best and kept you there. Notice that there are certain blessings that come to us no matter how much it reduces to reach a threshold and remains there. There are some people, let me use finances as an instance, they never cross 200,000. Give them 5 million. Something will happen but when it's now within the range of 200,000, it will remain in the account. It is the level you have been pegged in the spirit. As the level that will allow you become most faithful over God's resources. Are we together? Lord, I want to marry a man of God. God says, can I trust you with the assignment I have given him? Not the influence he has. The assignment. 
Can you stand the persecution? Everybody calling you a witch, stupid woman. She's eating such money to buy shoes and still keep quiet and say, Lord, bless these members. Or will you be the reason members will leave the man of God's church and say, I love this man, but his wife is a stranger. Can you sit in the midst of great power and still go down on your knees before God? Or you will be conscious, ah, let me not kneel down before all these small children. Let them not think I'm... <laughs> David danced before God. Danced before God. And the daughter of Saul, his wife, said, Abba, oh king, have you forgotten you are royalty? Don't, uh, you are falling your hand. David said, I'm dancing before the God who collected the kingdom from your father and gave to me. While that discussion was going, God was listening. And she died not having a child. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. I believe that one of the signs that God wants to produce in this ministry is a combination of strange levels of the anointing and strange levels of prosperity. These two dimensions, I really believe that God wants to bring it in a superior dimension in this house. But the question is, can God trust you? There are people who will stop going to church, stop going to the house of God, if they have a house, a car, and maybe some, a few millions in the account. Do you know that there are certain levels of increase, truly speaking, that when you get to, you will not have any personal prayer request again? Really? So what will you do with your prayer time? What will the five hours in His presence be spent for? Because now there seem to be legitimate reasons. You can take every prayer request one one hour and before you know it is five hours. Your pain keeps you there. But what if the pain is taken away? May God never give me anything He cannot take back. It's my miracle service prayer for myself. May God never give me any influence, any anointing, any access. You know how children behave? That you give them something and say, give me back and they refuse. That's how many of us are. It belongs to Him. And any day and any time He makes demand of it, let it go in a heartbeat. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son. Don't try to tell me he's the only one I know. And I know you love him. Rise up the mountain. The Bible said Abraham got up early in the morning carried Isaac and was on his way to go. Today we say Abraham's blessings are ours. And Jesus said, if ye be the children of Abraham, then you will do the works of Abraham. Sacrifice, death, it belongs to him. That if God commits the anointing to you, you will not go back home and begin to merchandise. And then when you hear your pastor of your local assembly preaching, you now say, look at this man. Here the nonsense is preaching. Misguided revelation, no power. What am I doing in this church? Open to the book of First ah! Kings chapter 4. That's where he's going. And you become like the man with the one talent. And then you find out the last meeting you went to is the last. Do you think you are anointed? Door suddenly closed. Not all closed doors are demonic. God closes doors. He can shut it and no man can open, including a man of God. He shuts it to keep you. It is his way of bringing preservation so that you will not be lost. Hallelujah. Increase can bring pride. Money can bring pride. Anointing can bring pride. You see, I've had the privilege of hosting God's anointing to a measure. And I know what the anointing can do. The anointing can turn you to become like a God. Human beings can worship you if necessary. It is up to you to not be foolish and rent your garment if need be. 
and say, look, I know I'm divine, but don't forget I'm human. My dominion is shared dominion, not absolute dominion. There are many of us who will not look for honor, but when you get it and it's rising beyond the level you know should be, you will stop it. It's still sin. I know how far God has taken me. And when I see human beings about to dehumanize themselves in the name of honoring the grace of God upon my life, I must behave myself wisely to say, no, no, you have honored me enough. I get the message. Don't go beyond this. And God says, I can trust you with more. I was at Benny Hinn's meeting last week and while I sat down and I was just watching the man of God minister, the grace, the power, the presence. I said, what level of trust did this man show God that granted him this level of grace? With a single word, brothers and sisters, miracles were happening as though it was a charm. Rising from wheelchairs as if people, as if they said everybody stand up. Casually, and it was not an issue to him. All the honor and the glamour there, it didn't concern him at all. When he got up and took the mic, he was, you could see his heart crying in the presence of God. I said, that's it. That's a man who has met presidents. He does not meet a president. A president meets him and calls it a privilege. And yet he can kneel down before God and roll like a child. Please, let's learn a lesson tonight. There is something about our understanding that is making our prayers look like it is not answered. Especially for those of us here who have come to receive the impartation. You will get it. This is not a thing of age. This is not a thing of level. It's a thing of alignment through knowledge. Hallelujah. I have watched people with little honor and I have seen the way they have misused the grace of God given to them. And this is the message God put in my heart to share with us. Shortly we are going to rise and we are going to be celebrating the hand of God here. Some of you who are coming here for the first time, I'm sure you have followed online, you have followed the teachings, or you have heard testimonies of what God is doing with the man of God. This is the man of God. This is all of me. So take, now that you have seen me, take your eyes away and trust the God of heaven to surprise you. This is all. Jesus, you be lifted high, higher, be lifted high. Jesus, you be lifted high, higher, be lifted higher. Let it be a prayer from your heart. My life be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Let our King, let my King be lifted higher. Let my King be lifted higher. Revelation, let my king be not just to a sermon, not colonia, not miracles, not anointing. Oh, oh. Testimony tonight. May you have captured my heart. Until I my heart to your love. Sing it from the depths of your heart at the revelation. You have captured my heart. Until my heart to your love. All I say, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that 
that's more than enough. Enough to take away every pain and every demon. But if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Listen to me. The first miracle God is giving you tonight. Listen. Is the humility to be able to say, Lord, no matter where you take me, no matter what you give me, I remain yours forever. Nothing will ever be able to take your place in my life. Not power, not money, not anointing, not miracles, not influence. Let me tell you, if you can pass this test tonight, then there is no limit to what God can do in your heart. Lift your voice and pray passionately to God. Go ahead. Lord, I can't be trustworthy. Go ahead and pray. Walk on my heart. Walk on my tendency. Walk on my heart. Walk on pride. If all I say, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Pray from the depth of your heart. If all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Let it be your prayer. The miracle is already happening to you. Sing you out, capture my heart, my heart with your love. The secret of the mighty hand of God upon a man. And I, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, not if Joshua Selman, not if Koinonia, thank God for the honor. But if I be lifted up, then I will draw beyond revelation, beyond Jimmy. I will draw all men to myself. I'd like you to pray and cry to God. Father, mercy upon my tendencies. My tendencies with money. My tendencies with pride. I cry. This is the miracle service happening to us already. Lift your voice and pray. Leave the issue of house and sickness. Pray, pray. Pray. Forget about your business. Forget about ministry. Forget about all of these things. Just focus on yourself. Lord, make me trustworthy. Make me trustworthy. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? The next prayer point. Lord, every idol in my heart. Listen, allow me to say it first before you pray. Do you know what an idol is? It's something you cannot live without. Something that assumes the place of God. A job can be an idol. A wife can be an idol. A husband can be an idol. A boyfriend, a girlfriend, an uncle can be an idol. The government can be an idol. Revelation can be an idol. Bible study can be an idol. Even prayer can be an idol. When your attention leaves Jesus to prayer, idolatry is happening there subtly. You are more concerned about the motions than the contact with a real person. It's idolatry. Are we together? 
God wants to bless us. I came to pour my heart because I really want God to help us. Father, there are things in my life that it looks like I cannot do without them. Destroy that tendency in me. Whoever told you until your account is fat you cannot sleep well? Who lied to you? Who made money such an idol? There are some of us, whether or not you need money, once there is nothing in your account, you can't sleep. Abba. Some of us will not be able to sleep because of marriage. When will the man come? When will the woman come? It's idolatry. I know you need a miracle in that regard. God will give it, but it's still idolatry. Lord, when will the ministry come? When will I start having ushers and peers around and God says, I watch your heart. I told it to you. Lord, when will the anointing on apostle come upon my life so that I will also make a name so that this will happen and God says, no way. You must be emptied of yourself. For the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Sing, Lord, I will bow. I will bow to you. To no other God but you, Lord. Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands have made. Nothing hands have made But you, Lord I will lay down my idols Come on, sing with me And I will lay down my idols And prompts I have made And all that has taken my heart Sing, Lord, I will bow I will bow to you, to no other God but you, Lord. Blessed is the man that God can find trustworthy. Hmm. Blessed is the woman. I'm telling you, you have not seen what God can do in your life till He finds you worthy of trust. You have not seen the kind of husband God can give until He finds you trustworthy. You have not seen the kind of wife God can give until He finds you trustworthy. You have not seen money. You have not seen nothing. I'm not talking business. You have not seen suffering wealth until God can trust your heart. You've not seen influence and anointing. You've not seen revelation yet until you can trust your heart. We are praying. Don't mind the time. God wants to deal with our life specifically. Please pray. Leave the miracles. They will happen in a moment. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, hey, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, use all of me, keep all of me, Lord. Anoint my everything, take my everything, I release my everything. You have everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. 
call of me, they call of me, call of me, call of me, call of me, they 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 call of me, one more prayer and then I'll begin to minister. One last prayer from the depth of your heart. Lord, dethrone everything that is above you in my life. No matter what it is. I dare you to pray that prayer. Dethrone it. Whatever has found its way to rise above you, dethrone it in my life. The quest for success. The appetite for influence. The pride of life. Vain glory in accomplishment. Dethrone it. That you be the Lord. Seated above. And alone. In a place guarded in my life by your jealousy. All of me, use all of me. Take all of me. Shalakata prakata sedega de balada balada bo. Shaka kapara kato sada brande gela kavya kato siada balada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that we have done the first things first, you can now pray. And say, Father, now that I've given you my heart, let everything that mocks you in my life bow to your name tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Everything. If it's sickness, let it go. Please pray. Lord, I have come tonight. Take a take a leva karya takata. Raka ta barunde kalabaria kata broke de bele kata. Every oppression of darkness, let it be away right now. Sela malana 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 masela malana 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 malana. Alleluia. Please lift your hands. I'll be ministering will be very fast. Very fast. It is very easy for the Holy Spirit to bring healing, miracles, deliverances to a life that is surrendered. The problem is usually our hardness. Our hardness of heart makes it difficult. Difficult for God to find expression. There are people gathered here under all kinds of strange influences, carrying all kinds of devils. One word, I tell you, is enough to set you free, provided your heart is open. It's not in the motions, it's authority. Authority. Keep your hands lifted, please. Just keep your hands lifted. I'm just acting as the Lord is leading me. The anointing of the Spirit is upon my life now. Now, the Lord is asking me to count five. At the fifth count, please bring all the people under the anointing. At the fifth count. At the fifth count. Jesus, I give you praise. One. Two. My goodness. Three. Four. Get ready now. Five. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, inside and outside. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them out. The Lord is bringing strange miracles to people right now. Overflow one outside. I see mighty angelic activities there. Mamre e te gade ko salaba supre gade galaba la na bush sakatos kaparanda skataprakatosia the authority of the king is in this place kalaba rod sakabara katos sakere ele kate pros kadabara katabarosia na balaba 
Ashaparakato Sabriada Balada Balada There is an anointing that is coming on these people, this set of people. This is not deliverance. This is a, there is an anointing. There is a kind of wine. There is a kind of oil that I'm seeing that is coming on this specific group of people. It's a strange level of grace and wine. You reign, you ancient Zion king, Kados, Kados. You are mighty on your throne. You reign. You ancient Zion king. Kados. Kados. Mighty on your throne. Break forth. Down fountains of the deep. And weep Kados. You are mighty on your throne. Please lift your hands. I'm seeing written in the air revelation. The spirit of revelation. I don't know why God is starting this way. But I'm stretching my hands. There are people that are receiving a baptism of the spirit of revelation. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. At the count of three, let it be yours. One, two, three. Take it, it's yours. The spirit of revelation. Granted access. To the deep things of the spirit. Access, access. Receive it. The gate is open. The gate is open in the spirit. Access, access. Access to the depths of the spirit. I give you eyes that see and ears that hear. Access to the deep things of the spirit. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne, He is mighty in this place. Mighty in this place. Mighty in this place. Second of Garapakoti here. Hallelujah. Now listen. The Lord is bringing deliverance to families, and hear me. This is the sign. I'm seeing people burning physical fire on them. It's like altars on fire, but physical individuals are becoming representatives of it. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands right now. That fire that brings deliverance at the count of three, in the name of Jesus, I release it all over this place. One, two, three. Let that fire fall right now. Let that fire fall right now. I challenge thrones. Dominion, the works of darkness. Hallelujah. I want to pray. There are spirits that are behind the undoing of many families. There are spirits that are behind many infirmities. There are spirits that are behind many predictable patterns. Are you ready for, for total freedom? Not partial freedom that you come back tomorrow. Lift your hands. Now you are ready to shout, Jesus, something is happening in this place. Listen, at the count of three, I want you to shout at the top of your voice. And in the name of Jesus, as you shout at the top of your voice, this family is under strange attack. This family, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare the foundation of evil in this family comes under judgment right now. In the name of Jesus, bring her out. Are you ready to shout? It's not a careless shout. Shout it with your might and your heart and you watch what happens to the gates of hell lord i pray that the force is tying down family tying down destiny tying down breakthroughs in this year of signs and wonders i pray that you arise oh god of jesuron in the shout of your people let there be total deliverance are you ready at the count of three one two three 
Let there be deliverance right now. I cause devils. I cause spirit. I cause enchantment. Divination. Operations of witchcraft. Shake it, shake it, shake it. A break it, take it out All the overflow. Those following on life. I place a sanction on the works of darkness. Please lift your hands and pray. You are here in this place. And all you have seen in your life is closed doors. Closed doors. Closed doors. I'm about to speak to you by the Spirit. Closed doors. The anointing for open doors is about to be released on certain people now. Lord, where are they? In the name that is above all names. Anyone here under the influence of any closed door, I stretch my hands now. Take that grace. Take that grace. For open doors. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Please help them. Take that grace. I open the doors. Doors of breakthrough. Doors of breakthrough. Doors of breakthrough. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to end. Please listen. We are flowing very fast for the sake of time. Listen for when your word comes. There are families that are tied with patterns. The same thing happens to everybody. Regardless of what geographic region they are. Almost graduating, they catch you from malpractice. Then something else happens to someone. Then something else happens. Someone wants to get married. After introduction, there is problem. Another person has the same thing. They are called patterns. They are programmed by a covenant. But tonight, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, get set because fire is about to fall to break all kinds of patterns. Are you ready now? At the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above all names. And at the shout of that name, every pattern in every family both for you and your loved ones connecting by faith that there be liberty are you ready one two three i break pattern be broken now pattern be broken now ordinances that cause repetition be broken now open up the day Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up, say, open up the gate? We are making a decree in the realm of the spirit. Open up the door. Will you open up the cage? Open up the cage. The cage. Open up the door. Hallelujah. Goodness. Bring that lady. This lady you are holding. Come. Hold on, don't worry, just keep her out. Hold on. As I stood there, I saw a very strange kind of oppression in this lady's family. And if we leave her to sit down there, you will think she's free, but it's not over. In the name of Jesus, I caught the devil that is back of this tragedy. It's time for you to go. This is Koinonia. A place of God's presence and power, and I dislodge every force of darkness. Be gone now, in the name of Jesus Christ, forever, 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 in the name of Jesus. Overflow three. I just want you to watch your screen. Just overflow three. I want to pray for you. The Lord is ministering something to me. The overflow in the building there. Overflow 3. 
at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. I see massive angelic activities happening there. Overflow three. Are you ready now? At the count of three. One, two, three. Let there be miracles right now. Let there be breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Stella. Stella. I'm hearing a name. Stella. 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 Jalako siara kato sabriata. Rado kalabro sadabaro kusho. I want you to bring the lady that begins to laugh strangely by the spirit now here in this congregation now will you open up the gate open up the door bring her I want to prophesy because the Lord is saying that is bringing your family into a season of strange laughter. This is the word of the Lord to this lady. I don't know what has happened in her family. This same grace is falling on certain people right now. As I'm speaking, this same grace, the Lord is opening doors of laughter to their family. And many people will find out by the Spirit, in an uncontrollable way, that grace, the laughter is not just some sarcasm, it is by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I release that grace. I release that grace. I release that grace. I release that grace. What's your name? Stella, where are you from? I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for everyone, but I want to pray. Please, hold her back for her. I want to pray for you. There is witchcraft in your family. And I must pray seriously for you. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not a prophet of doom. This is a place where God is setting people free. That brother holding photos, you, the young man, look at him. Come. Hold my hands, my dear. In the name of Jesus, I end the plague of witchcraft right now in your family. I command by the Spirit of the Lord that everything that does not look like God in your family be uprooted now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to lay hands on you. God is anointing you. I'm seeing an anointing like oil that is coming upon you. And the Lord is saying this anointing is bringing favor not just to you but your family. This is what the Lord is saying. He's bringing you to that realm, that dimension of favor. That dimension of favor. That dimension of favor. The Lord is bringing rest to your family. That's the word that I'm hearing. Rest. Rest to your family. Rest to your family. There is a gentleman, as I'm laying hands on this lady, I'm seeing light leaving her and is looking for a gentleman somewhere. There is a gentleman that this same word is for. The anointing of the Spirit is coming upon him right now. He's inside this auditorium. Let me have that gentleman now. The anointing of the Spirit of God is going to come upon a brother as I'm laying hands on this lady. It's by the Spirit. Rest for you. In the name of Jesus. Rest. And I cause the powers of darkness. I'm seeing witchcraft in your family. Let me make contact with you. Bring him into a point of rest, oh God. Take away hardship from the family. In the name of Jesus Christ, let hardship be gone forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, your family is going to experience breakthrough in the month of March. The month of March is a breakthrough month for your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Lord is bringing breakthrough for your family by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. I don't know who this woman is. Madam, can I talk to you? Please come quickly.
this your first time here? You've been here. I want to pray for you. I take away the spirit of death. Death. Hold my hands. Let it lead you in the name of Jesus. The spirit of death. I cast it by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. The spirit of death. No one will bury you. You will not bury anyone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm seeing... Okay, this is the gentleman. Let me see the photos. Who is this? Where is your mom's photo? This is what I'm looking for. Where is she? Where is she? She's in the house. Where is the house? Oh, Anambra State. Anambra State. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. So that you will not hear that your mother is survived by you people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. I want to pray. That's why I asked you to come with the people. This is... This is your mother's mother. This is your grandmother. This is what the Spirit of God is. Tell me yes or no. Yes, sir. I'm saying this is your grandmother. Yes, sir. And the Lord is showing me this photo. And he's saying this was your mom. Yes, sir. When she was young. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. The Lord is bringing, is taking away death. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing that the devil wants to attack the life of your mother. But the reason why I held this photo is so that I will cancel death completely. Yes, sir. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Forget about your personal desires. God is going to meet that. Okay. What good is your desire to hear that your mom has just gone like that? Hold these photos. Father, preserve the life of our mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against death. I lay my hands on this photo and I decree and declare that your mother lives strong and active in the name of Jesus Christ strong and active in the name of Jesus strong and active in the name of Jesus I'm seeing an employment letter in the sky this is what I'm seeing yes this is a letter of employment I'm seeing and I'm seeing it fall on I'm seeing a number written nine on it this is nine people nine people that this is happening to right now by the spirit i declare wherever they are nine people inside and outside let the anointing of the spirit touch those people now supernatural employment you cannot explain it it's by the spirit i release the grace to make this happen they are scattered across nine people i'm going to pray generally for jobs but i'm just doing what the lord is showing me in the name of jesus receive it receive it wherever you are receive it regardless of the limitations i decree and i declare it becomes yours right now it becomes yours by the power of the spirit in the name of jesus christ I you tell me Stella. your sister's name okay, yes. come let me pray for you and you know whatever it is that she's trusting god for and i use you also as a point of contact in the name of jesus let there be a miracle for you the Lord is taking away shame from her life. This is what He's doing. He's rolling away shame from her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rolling away shame. The Lord is bringing speed. You know, you always hear me prophesy speed. But many people just fall for nothing and stand up and they don't believe it. Speed is real. Where in such a short time you can do so much. I want to pray that grace. And I know it's going to come on specific people right now. And then we're going to pray for the sick. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. Grace. There is a grace for speed. There is a grace for speed. I'm going to pray. Be careful so that those who start running by the Spirit, don't, don't interrupt anyone, please. Be careful. It doesn't mean you have to do that, but I'm seeing that happening to people in a vision. That grace is coming and you see them, it's like they can't control themselves. Wherever they are, oh God, I stretch my hands now. The grace for speed. Take that grace now. Grace for speed. Run like Elijah. In the name of Jesus, I command speed in your life. I program speed in your destiny, inside and outside, everywhere, in the name of Jesus. Let that grace come upon you. Let it come upon your career. Let it come upon your walk of faith. Speed, speed, speed for your family. Speed for your career. Speed. 
is the way God restores. He restores by bringing speed. The same way what you would have done, you could not do. Then he makes you do certain things that you are not supposed to do. God is not done. That grace is still coming on people. This grace for speed. I want to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing that grace come on people. That in one month, the hand of God will so be stretched on your life. And you will do things that will amaze you. I stretch my hand. May the right hand of God bring speed. Speed to people. In the name of Jesus. Speed to projects. Speed to family concerns. Speed to dreams and visions and goals. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick. will be very fast, but just allow me to do something strange that I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord capture like an entity, like a dark entity, and put it on chains. And is bringing it out, and the Lord is saying that this is what has been stopping the breakthrough of many families. Please listen, listen. For no man can come into a man's house and spoil that man except he binds the strong man. This is what the Lord is showing me in the vision. And I'm about to pray this to happen now. Many of you will be surprised. It may not concern you, but you are standing for your family. How many of you know we believe in family here? You are not free if your family is not free. Let me tell you the truth. So there's no room for selfishness to say, I'm okay. If your family is in captivity to sabotage your own success, you will have untold battles from your very loved ones. If all the brothers of Joseph equally had dreams, they won't fight themselves. But because only one person had a dream, the rest fought him. The spirit of the living God. I'm seeing this entity. I'm seeing it again. It's, it's recurring like a vision. And the Lord is asking me to prophesy. And as I speak that word, I'm seeing like arrows. This is not for destruction. This is bringing strange breakthrough to families. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I don't know who belongs to this category. But inside, outside, online, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, your family is ready to be free right now. And God will give you a sign right now. One, two, three. I command that freedom. I command that liberty now. I command that liberty now. I command that liberty now from every cause. Every yoke, every spell, every enchantment, be free now. From the north of Nigeria to the south, the east and the west, every locality represented in the name of Jesus, be free. I challenge every power, every force. I challenge every force, every strong man that stands at the gate of every family to make sure there is no going out and there is no coming in. He has tied the destiny of women, the destiny of men, the destiny of women. Release them now. Release them now. Release their destinies now. In the name of Jesus, I command every strong man by covenant who has tied any family. Let them go now. Many things are happening under this cloud. God is bringing vengeance. Vengeance upon the wicked. Hallelujah.
why is their breakthrough hanging this is what i'm seeing like a hunger keeping something like a garment and then i'm seeing people naked and not clothed by that garment it's a revelation it should be yours but something has kept it in the spirit right now fire i see fire coming on the hands of people this is a reception in the realm of the spirit i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus let that anointing release what is yours whatever has left heaven and is yet to enter your hand let it come into your hands now by the spirit of the living god let it come into your hands now by the spirit of the living god it's yours it's yours it's yours take it now in the name of jesus Open up the gate. Alabaraka to Saka de Bakariana Balakos of Russia. Salabaros of the Anakatos. Listen, I'm going to pray for the sick now, but I'm led to release a word of prophecy. Any family in trouble now. The Bible says if you are not in trouble, don't worry. There are families in trouble that only God can set them free. He says, I'm by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet were they preserved. I want to send a word that will bail families out now. In the name that is above all names, I prophesy to any family in trouble, whether financial trouble, whether witchcraft, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, come out of that trouble now. Come out of that challenge now. I send prophecy like a sword into your family. Come out of every predicament now. Come out of shame now. Come out of disappointment now. And every spirit that is joining the head of family members together, quarrel, brothers hating themselves, sisters hating themselves either because of money or property or whatever it is i silence that devil right now in the name of jesus please be sensitive please be sensitive don't be careless at all be very spiritual the lord is showing me a plane that is taking someone outside this country. I'm seeing a plane by the Spirit. This is what I'm seeing. A plane rising and moving. Rising above buildings. Rising above fences. I don't know if there are people here trusting God for that miracle, but I release it now. By the Spirit of the living God, I release it now. I release it now. I release it now. I release it now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now listen, listen very carefully. I want to pray for the sick. Now listen. I'll tell you why many people don't receive. They don't expect to receive. They expect to be prayed for, but they don't expect to receive. The standard procedure is to just pray for people at random, and then those who are healed come out and we take testimonies. But because we understand the kind of grace that God has put upon this ministry, and we want to take out time to make sure people are touched. At least I know that there are thousands of people, but it's not too much to be ministered to. We don't want anyone to go back. It's a privilege that God has given us in this territory to carry His healing power. And that's why we take out time to minister to people. We are going to be very, very fast. I know that there are many of you who came here sick. It's a miracle service. It's not a joke. The testimonies you've been hearing are not stage managed. God is about to do it again. So I want you to be sensitive. So we are going to do it very fast. While that is happening, please. How many of you have written your prayer requests? Now I want to give you a chance for those who have not written your prayer requests. You will be praying and then you will be writing it down. Write your request. Call your loved ones and tell them God is at work. God answers prayers in this place very quickly. But those who are trusting God for healing miracles, please overflow. One, two, three, main auditorium. Make your way now quickly. Make your way quickly to the front. Please, quickly, let's save time. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, let this corporate grace work. Let there be miracles. There are people with real conditions, some terminal diseases. You are the healer. We are only channels for you to reach people. And Lord, we step in your authority. Let there be miracles, signs and wonders right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you guys. We'll be very, very fast. The worship team will coordinate us. Please make sure that you are trusting God for miracles. Write your requests. And then afterwards, we're going to pray on the request. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're the God of wonders. Amazing God. You're the God of miracles. Amazing God. You're the God of wonders. Amazing God. You're the God of miracles. Amazing. You are the God of Amazing God, amazing God, you're the God of miracles. Amazing God, you are the God of wonders. Amazing God, you are the God of miracles. Amazing, you are the God.
words that speak the things around. The things around. I stretch out. I live for me, Lord. You took them away. The chains and cords.
Whether or not they are still ministering in your, your place, don't worry. You can be following the prayers while you stand. Those still ministering, just, just go ahead. It's time to pray. Please, if you are yet to submit your request, just wave it and someone will pick it. Please, quickly, quickly. If you are yet to submit your request, why do we do this? It's not a ritual, brothers and sisters. This is a mystery that God has given unto us. You have heard of the strange testimonies. These are some of the mysteries that happen in every miracle service. Where everybody's request can find expression here. This is a representation of the pain, the cry, the impossible situation of men and women. And I'm kneeling before the Lord on behalf of His people to arise and do great things. We have seen all kinds of testimonies. You heard the testimonies this morning. Don't sit back there and be wondering, will God do it? No. No. You see, the grace that answers to these prayers you see, is a covenant. Are we together? Every man has a covenant with God. Not grace, law. No. A mystery between you and God like a husband and his wife. And God can bless you for the sake of another. It's true. It's true. It's true. Paul said, For this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees to the Father of our Lord. I want to pray a prayer and it's free. So this is not just some jealous, fetish thing. No, no, not at all. Not at all. We are people of spiritual intelligence. I'm saying this because I want you to release your faith and believe. Nobody reads anybody's request here. It is between you and God. As soon as we are done here, these requests are gone and they are born. So next time you are writing requests, don't say, if I write this, what if they read? Look at this. There are thousands of requests here. Who has time to read whatever is written? There is a God that answers prayers. There is a God that can wipe tears in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands towards me. And I want you to just pray the Spirit.
name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that over this request, my God and my Lord, this is a representation of the pain of your evil. This is a representation of their struggles. This is the representation of their difficulties. This is the representation of the mountains that stand between them and their joy and their rest and their peace. Families are almost breaking because of the requests that are tabled here. Many people are losing their minds and losing their destinies and almost losing the faith. Lord, I pray that you arise like the mighty God that you are. Visit everyone individually in the name of Jesus. Visit every case individually in the name of Jesus. Visit every individual in the name of Jesus. Visit every family in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every request brought before this altar, may my God arise in majesty and turn it to a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in this year of signs and wonders, begin to give your people tokens and signs. Let them know you have answered their prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus the request you have written here, no matter how impossible, let this be the last time you will write it. Let this be the last time you will write it. Let this be the last time you will write it. Every human agent who can partner with God to make this request your testimony, I call them into your life now. Whoever must die for this prayer to be answered, in the name of Jesus, that they do not repent, may the fire of God bring judgment on them. Whoever must lose sleep like Nebuchadnezzar for this prayer to be answered, let it be so for them. Whoever must have a revelation like Abimelech to let you be, May God give them that visitation. Whoever must exalt you like Joseph, in the name of Jesus, may God bring them to answer this. Whoever must favor you like Hadassah, Esther, may God compel them to do so for you. Lord, for many of these requests, let it be by this time tomorrow. Let it be by this time tomorrow that your people will be rejoicing in glory in the name of Jesus Christ. The same way I stand upon this request, it will never rise above any one of you. I stand upon it prophetically and I declare that it remains under your feet forever. There are situations here that require creative miracles. May the God of heaven make it happen. There are issues here that require restoration. May the King of glory make it happen. There are requests here that represent divine connections. In the name of Jesus, may God make it happen. Whoever fights the answer to this request is fighting God. And God will arise in his vengeance and judgment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore we agree with the saints in heaven and the angels and we call this request done. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, these are the things we engage that bring the results you see. 
If the devil tries to escape the prophetic word to you, the request is there waiting for him. It is impossible to come for the miracle service and not expect a miracle. The system has been so designed that you must be visited. If not by prophecy, if not through the worship, if not through the prayer, if not by direct contact, by this covenant practice here. It's impossible for you to not experience signs and wonders. Now I want to pray for you. This is the last thing we are going to do here. A gentleman once asked me and said, Why do you say that the prophetic declarations over God's people is the most powerful part of the miracle service? Because to him it doesn't look like it. There are people flying up and down under the anointing and that looks to him more charismatic and the revelations of the word of knowledge and prophecy. And I told him, I said, you see, all those things are revelatory. They just reveal information that most likely the person knows. But this that is being uttered is creating realities. It's not a suggestion. Son of man, can these bones live? He said, only down the west. Then he said, prophesy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. He didn't say, somebody looked for where the bones. That means that you did not see the different bones. did not mean they were not there. They were just waiting for the word that will bring them together. The same way you are here, your blessing is in one state. Your breakthrough is in another place. Prophecy calls them like the bones. The bones did not beg. They just listened. Because everything has an ear. So I want your heart to be open. Please believe it with all your heart. Believe this word. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you now. Sharos Karaposhikia. In the name that is above all names, I pray for you right from January that the kind of of speed you have never seen in your life may that dimension of speed become your testimony from tonight in the name of Jesus Christ and they told Saul he said on your way going you will see three men holding two loaves of bread he said they will all salute you and two of them will give you in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. You know, one of my greatest desire, if you ask me, one of the greatest graces that I desire to come on people in this season is favor. Many people think they know what favor is. No. Believe me, if you really have favor, it will end suffering in your life regardless of the condition. There is such a grace that can follow a man like a shadow. People are rising as if they charm them to make sure you succeed in the name that is above all names. Shakatos kata prakatos zilia kariyaka sobrendegete. From tonight, walk experientially in the favor of God. Walk experientially in the favor of God. Walk experientially in the favor of God. Listen, what your strength could not do for you, what your education could not do, what your experience could not do, I compel favor to do it for you. God is taking away every reproach. And I prophesy it. Every embargo, every reproach on anyone's life and destiny, I roll it away now. I roll it away now. I roll it away now. Jeremy, I don't know who has ignored you or the grace of God upon your life, but I put an anointing upon you. For recognition and honor. 
I prophesy to your life a grace for recognition and honor. Receive it right now. I don't know what has died in your hand. It works for others until it gets to your turn. Right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I command that nothing dies in your hand. Nothing fails in your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your spiritual life. Many of you, it's been a long time since you had a real encounter. Encounters with angels, encounters of visions. I release that unction for a strange dimension of deep encounters. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Open vision three. Receive it encounters from scripture. Let it be yours in the name of Jesus. I pray for people whose prayer lives have gone down, cold, lukewarm. You are not bad. You just found out that your prayer life is like everything just disappeared. You open your Bible, you just keep looking at it. You can't study. In the name of Jesus, I find the coals upon that prayer altar. It comes back to life now. It comes back to life now. The spirit that causes men to sleep and slumber. They open their Bibles and sleep on it for hours. Mumble tongues for five minutes. I command that spirit to live your life forever. Let there be fire on your prayer altar. Let there be fire upon your prayer life. I pray for those whose passion for the word has disappeared. No studying books, no watching videos, no spiritual development. I declare, may that passion be restored tonight. Every wrong individual in your life that is not adding to your life, I take them out of your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone here looking for a job. In the name of Jesus. You will not get a job that will make you ashamed to say I'm working. You will get a job with honor and dignity. I pray for those who are students. The kind of CGPA you have never seen. In the name that is above all names. Let that become your testimony. For those of you who have written exams and accept God helps you, the truth is what you wrote is nonsense. Let the mercy of God bring corrections for you. Hallelujah. I still am led to pray for students. There are those here right now who don't even know where their school fees will come from. Truthfully speaking, no accommodation, no school fees, no father, no mother, and some of them out of pressure are already being tempted of the devil to start getting into ways that will destroy them. May the mystery that brought ravens for Elijah bring your resources. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayer points and we're done. I pray for your family members. I don't know what has made you watch your parents cry. As adult as they are, a situation broke them down till they cried. I declare that an end comes to that shame. An end comes to that embarrassment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that by February miracle service, may you be ten times greater than you are now. Ten times greater than you are now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I want you, this month is almost ending. Please, I want you to pay attention to every teaching. We have some dangerous series we are about to start. Please, 
I want you to open up your spirit and listen. These teachings are free for our own edification. If I were you, I would look forward to when this message will be uploaded and I will play it. Even if you are not concentrating, just let it run. Especially the prayer times and you receive it into your spirit. You have to engage the word. God is not a magician. Are we together? I bless you in the name of Jesus. You will not need to tell people you came here. God will arise and surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Now, aside from those under the anointing, please listen carefully. I'm about to make the altar call. Overflow one, two, three. Except for maybe if there are still people who are being prayed for. Please, no distractions. Let me make the altar call. It matters to us that souls are saved. It matters to me. It matters to this ministry. It matters to the God of all flesh that souls are saved. Not only that people are healed, delivered, set free, and transformed. It matters that souls are saved. There are people here right now who are saying, Man of God, I need to make my ways right with Jesus. You may be in here, the main auditorium, overflow one, two, three. Please, no moving around. Let's respect the altar call. Please and please. Please and please. No moving around. Let's, let's listen. I'm about to make that altar call. Wherever you are, please, I want you to boldly, boldly make your way to the front. You are, you are committing your heart to Jesus or you are rededicating your life. Whether you are inside, you are outside, wherever you are. Or some people here may be saying, man of God, I love Jesus, but truly I want to rededicate my life. At one point I gave my heart to Him. Wherever you are, make your way to the front. The gentleman is coming. God bless you. Please rise up on your feet and come. Don't allow anybody to look at you. Let's, let's encourage them. Stand, stand, stand. Please stand. Go ahead. I believe there are so many people. Don't sit back. No one will force you, but be honest enough and be loving to your destiny by coming here to hand your life to Jesus. Please rush if you are coming. Let's honor them. They are coming. Let's appreciate them. They are still coming. There should be many more people. Please leave your seat quickly. Overflow three, overflow two, overflow one. Those connecting online, watch for the prayers and then you pray along with us. And you can let our media team know that you have given your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the best decision that can ever happen to anybody. But because, I think maybe because it's not so charismatic and flamboyant, people downplay it. You can have all the healing, all the prosperity and everything in this life without Jesus Christ. Not only are you going to hell, you will live a life of misery and failure in this life. I guarantee you. You may have money, you may have all of these things, but the peace that only comes from knowing Jesus. The rest, he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come, make your way to Jesus. I want to appreciate all of you. Please, if you are coming, join them quickly. I'm about to lead them um, in the prayer of salvation. Young, old, join quickly. Lift your right hand and please say after me, truthfully, sincerely. You are not just reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe in you that you are the Son of God. You died for me. You gave your life for my sins tonight I have heard your word and I declare that you are my Lord you are my Savior you are my King you are my friend I hand over my life to you and I receive your life in return gentlemen make sure you join in the prayer we're almost done hallelujah oh they were coming from overflow 3 Say, Jesus, my life is yours today and forever. I declare that I am yours forever. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, as always, I present to you the ones you died for. A 33 year old man hung naked on the cross to prove his love for you. 
I hope that you are making this decision from the depth of your heart and sincerely so. Especially for those of you who came late. It's not a poem we recite emotionally. Let this be a decision that is backed up by the responsibility to take the advantage of the grace that will be supplied to live a victorious Christian life. I declare your sins forgiven in the name of Jesus. I declare that the power of the flesh is broken over you. No matter what your past has been, the Lord gives you a new beginning. In the name of Jesus. From tonight you subscribe to a life of victory and glory. Ever forward, never backward. In the name of Jesus. You are blessed, you are highly favored. I declare that the life of God is yours forever. In Jesus name. Amen and Amen. Thank you for making this great decision. Now, um, I want you to follow. There's a gentleman waving his hands. All of you will follow him. They will lead you and there will be a group of people to just welcome you more warmly on our behalf and communicate a few details. God bless you. Please follow the gentleman. Let's honor them. Honor them, Koinonia. Is this the best you can do? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.